know what I've learned about audio these past couple of years? It's that every move we make in audio has a compromise. For every benefit a mixing decision has, there will always be a detracting factor as well. And a great example of this is oversampling. Now, it's very common knowledge that I believe in the use of oversampling to reduce or remove aliasing from any audible aspect. If you're unsure about aliasing, I have linked a few detailed videos I have made on the topic in the description of this video. And for anybody looking for context as well, there are many examples on my channel of the audible benefit of oversampling. Again, videos linked in the description. However, as I said at the start of the video, in audio, there is always some sort of compromise to be made. In a sense, you have to lose something to gain something else. And in the case of many plugins that include oversampling, that compromise usually comes in the form of a high-end phase shift. Now, to be clear, I am not going to pretend that I am extremely knowledgeable when it comes to DSP and the mathematics behind digital filters. I just do not have the time <laughs> or the energy to do all of the learning that is required. And all I know is that there are normally two types of steep digital low-pass filters used in oversampling, which are IIR and FIR. IIR filters are commonly used in many plugins for oversampling as they incur less CPU, which is the benefit to the user's processing, but comes with the detractor of a high-end phase shift, as IIR filters are not linear phase. So in most analog emulations and saturation plugins that include oversampling, you'll notice a high-end phase shift. This was evident when Kit released their MoQ as they used IIR minimum phase oversampling filters to stop the EQ cramping at 44.1 and 48 kilohertz. And in this case, it was a solution to a problem that in turn created another problem because it was all a balance of compromise. In the first case, the benefit of fixing the EQ cramping was the result of a more accurate linear frequency response with the compromise being added CPU load. But by opting to use minimum phase oversampling, they had created the high-end phase issue, which in turn made the EQ respond unlike the hardware. And all because the added CPU compromise of linear phase outweighed the benefit of correctly modelled phase behaviour. And as much as I gave Kit a hard time over this, I still feel that it's a very good example of how audio is all about compromise. Sometimes it's just about seeing the whole picture and how fixing one problem can in turn cause another. And in many cases, it's about deciding which problem has the least detrimental effect. Now, my solution to this when I made my own Melda plugin was to use linear phase oversampling, which I'm pretty sure is an FIR filter. From what I read, in most cases, FIR filters are linear phase, but can be minimum phase as well, which I think is the case possibly with DDMF Meta plugin FIR oversampling, as the phase changes a lot with every oversample increase, but when in times 2 mode, it reacts very close to the original phase response. And that's why in recent times, if I've wanted to fix EQ cramping or needed times 2 oversampling for a bit of aliasing removal, then I normally find that Meta Plugins times 2 FIR filter is normally the best option, in my opinion, for third-party plugins. And what interests me even more is how much I hear aliasing as a qualitative detractor, as when I did most of my oversampling videos, I used the IIR filter, if I recall correctly, which would have resulted in that high-end phase shift you get with minimum phase filters but I still preferred the oversampled audio compared to the aliased versions, which tells me that the aliasing issue is more problematic to my ears than the high-end phase shift. Basically, I know I can justify that compromise when dealing with an audibly aliasing plugin, which is really fascinating as when I compared the kit to their hardware examples, I preferred the high-end of the analog compared to the high-end phase shift of the kit MoQ. So I know that when it comes to oversampling a linear plugin, I can't really justify fixing the EQ cramping. And many of you will be asking, But what about plugins that use complex linear phase oversampling algorithms like Melder's HQ oversampling, which can provide linear phase oversampling up to ridiculous amounts? Surely that would fix all of the issues if your computer could deal with the high CPU consumption. 
Well, that's something that I thought, because in my head, if it's linear phase oversampling, then the EQ moves made in the plugin aren't affected, as they are technically still minimum phase, as the oversampling doesn't make the plugin completely linear phase. It's just the FIR filter that's linear phase. So where would the compromise be? The compromise is in linear phase's inherent effect on transients. Yes, <laughs> that word I've come to loathe. I'm going to say it. Pre-ringing. Pre-ringing and linear phase has turned into this almost boogeyman and due to this many people are almost afraid to try out anything linear phase on anything heavy transient based like kick and snare in case they get this weird whooshing sound before the transient. Now, I'm not saying that extreme pre-ringing can't happen. It can, it's been proven. But please remember that most videos you watch showing this have been set up a very specific way to show you this. Dan Worrell states clearly on his video that as much as pre-ringing is unavoidable using linear phase, he still had to use a very specific kick drum, EQ'd a very specific way in order to make the pre-ringing really audible. And in most cases, it is something that you should just use your ears to test for. And that's what I did. And I came to the conclusion that in most cases, just softens the transient a bit. And <laughs> to be honest, that's really all I found. But it is very subtle. However, I can normally hear just a bit more punch. And because I like my drums punchy, the benefit of linear phase doesn't outweigh the subtle softening of transient to my specific tastes. Oversampling has turned into this very quick fix for many, but to be honest, I try and avoid it if I can. To avoid aliasing and oversampling, you can simply just mix cleaner or use saturators that don't create as much high order harmonics. If it's a kick, <laughs> Why are you worried about high-end phase shifts caused by IIR filters? You'll be lucky if your kick makes anything audible in the high-end to discern anyway. If it's a guitar or piano, then why worry about linear phase oversampling when you want the drums to carry most of the transient energy anyway? And even on drums, you might actually want to soften the transient if you have a really peaky snare, for example. Linear phase oversampling can sometimes just be the right tool for things like overheads and drum rooms where... You want more high-end clarity compared to IIR and also don't want the aliasing made by the saturator or compressor, which can dull the top end. And even aliasing, yes. Sometimes even I, Paul Third, purposely use an aliasing saturator to sit backing vocals behind the lead vocal. I use what I normally see as a problem of aliasing to actually become a benefit because I understand how it affects the source. And many will argue... It's so pointless, and it's more engineering mumbo-jumbo that distracts you from the creative and the song. But sometimes it's these small details that build up. Many guys pay thousands in gear for an extra subjective 2-3%. But from where I personally see it, that little bit extra has always been in plain sight, and it's completely free because it's up top in your noggin. So use your ears and don't be afraid to make decisions just because something else might be affected. Try it, and if it works, then happy days. And if it doesn't, then try something else. But at least you know why you've made that decision. And that's how I'll leave this week's video. My name is Paul Third. If you've liked the video, like the video. If you've not subscribed, subscribe. And I'll see you again next week.